Hi guys, Tom here from Terra Deeper, and today we're actually going to start doing the service pre enter check and getting this chopper back in the field. In the previous video, we went through a few different parts of the chopper, what they do, um, and for that, we've taken off a few guards, we've opened up the sides, and we've opened up the trommel and the feeder housing and the first thing we want to do now uh, to do the service and the pre-harvest check is get everything closed up make sure nothing can explode and kill us or kill anybody else and yeah, we've got to get this machine outside and do a test drive. Now, before you ask, it might seem a bit stupid to some people to open everything up when you're going to do a test drive anyway. Yeah, it is. But it isn't. Basically, I do this anyway. Even when um, I'm at work and I'm going about my regular day, I probably wouldn't bring it in the workshop uh, unless it was pissing down outside as it is now. But <clears throat> if a customer brings you a machine or you get a machine that you didn't drive last or a machine that you're not familiar with, especially a machine like a chopper or a combine harvester or a baler, you know, these, these things with lots of moving parts, it's very important or it's not important, it's imperative that you make sure that nothing has been uh, dismantled, nothing's been loosened, nothing's hanging down where it can cause damage. Alright, here we are. We're outside and what I'm getting ready to do is let everything warm up, get everything running and then go and take a, a an optical and an acoustic tour of everything. So we're here, hang on. This is sort of like our, our shit bay. Look at all that shit. Um, where all any dirt from machines or from, from blowing machines off. This is where we, this is where we chuck it and then we can load it up on a trailer at a later date. I've got, I don't know if you can see that, hang on. We've got the chute, or the spout, or whatever you want to call it, pointed towards the old ship bay, <clears throat> so that if anything flies out, it all goes in the ship bay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it is, it is a guarantee that something will fly out, there will be some shit and dirt and whatever in there. There'll be some shit and dirt still in the chute and I guarantee some something will blow out so don't be going doing it in the workshop. The next thing is safety. Just in case uh, there was a nut and bolt, somebody's left a spanner or a wrench or there's a stone or god forbid the knives shit themselves and fly out the fly out the chute. It's better that it can happen somewhere where nobody's gonna get hurt. Uh, animals, Precy, my dog, is in the office. He's not happy about it, but for, the, for this 10 minutes, uh, he'll, he'll live. I just don't wanna have to have eyes in the back of my head and God forbid anything happens to him, okay? So it, in this moment, you're gonna be concentrating on some, on on the machine and you're not going to be able to look out for children and animals. I know it sounds like I'm being a massive pussy. You little pansy bitch. But <clears throat> nobody wants that to happen. Everybody says it won't happen until it happens. While we're on the, um, the subject of safety, what you're going to need is earmuffs. I oh, know. And, <laughs> and safety glasses so I know we look like a bit of a tit but we're gonna have this running at full speed full gas 
and we're going to be inspecting the machine from outside. Okay, so don't risk your hearing, don't risk your eyesight. For these few minutes, you can look like a bell end. We won't tell anybody. Next, what we need is, and if you watch my everyday carry video, you'll have this with you. That's a special class wrench. I've got a, a multi wrench here and a torch, and we don't need anything else, okay? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get everything running. That means all the lights, work lights, heaters. Um, we're gonna test the windscreen wipers. We're gonna test the windscreen washers. Um, pretty much everything. We're gonna test if we, if we can uh, uh, switch gears. It sounds stupid. Of course you can switch gears, but until you're on the field and you realize, whoa, something's wrong here. We had a combine harvester a few years ago and the customer had bought um, a, a bit of land and it was on a bit of a hill. And, and he noticed that going down the hill, the combine would actually come out of gear and it'd start running away with itself. Yeah. Had anybody tested the gearbox? Of course it works. The gearbox should should switch gears pretty quickly. And it was switching gears, but it was taking forever. And you know, you could see in the in the Cebus computer that it was trying, stopping, trying, stopping, trying, stopping. And at some point the gear would go in after maybe 20 seconds of trying that's not normal it should happen in less than five seconds so uh, nobody nobody had ever really paid attention to it we are gonna pay attention to it uh the handbrake we're gonna put the handbrake in turn it off turn it on we're gonna make sure that the handbrake really is active and that means we will also push the lever forwards with the handbrake activated and see what happens. <clears throat> We're gonna put it in neutral. We're gonna push the lever forwards uh, when it's in neutral. So if I gear one, neutral. Now we'll take the handbrake off. <laughs> I've already tried it, that's why I'm so confident. Um, and backwards. I'm not sure if you can see that, hang on. So it really does work, we're not buggering off. That's also how you'll um, <clears throat> get the air out, out of the hydraulics, by the way. So now, <clears throat> when, now we've gone through everything, and I mean everything. Move the seat. Does the seat work? Uh, pump the seat up and down. Does that work? Because these are all things that we need to know before the harvest um, when we've done that then we're gonna go and start the machine so this is the bit where everybody shits themselves and I'm pretty sure not, I'm pretty sure nothing's gonna happen pretty sure ah I'll be back in a minute so sorry, I just had to uh, run and get a jumper or a pullover, whatever you Americans call it. Cause it's cold outside. Oh. Sorry. I'm still recovering a little bit from the old uh, Rona. So, uh, you know, bear with me. I'd forgotten to put the, the drive shaft on for the feeder housing. So I've put it on. And now we're going to start it up. Oh, that sounded rough. Something somewhere, something somewhere doesn't sound nice. Um. <clears throat> Yeah.
You see, you see they're coming from the trommel or the accelerator. So, first thing we're gonna do is sharpen the knives. So the machine's sharpening the knives. Let me show you. Oh. That's not good. So we've got a problem. Well, we've, we've got a problem with the knife sharpening. Just, uh, we can start it again, see. See if it was just a bit of bad luck. I mean, it starts to start sharpening. It's registering um, cycles, so it registers when the stone goes completely to the left and then to completely back to the right. And it's registering cycles. What it what it has is is a, a, a pre-programmed time limit that the stone has to get from right to left and back to right again. And if it takes too long, then uh, it'll stop and try and put the it'll bring the stone back to the start position. That was the the code uh, in German. It said that it, it exceeded the time limit. This can happen over winter if the or in winter if the machines have been stood for a long time. It's sometimes worth you know if they've just been pressure washed. Uh, Greasing up the stone or greasing up the, the uh, cylinder that moves the stone and just checking that there's no dirt in there. I had actually checked for dirt, but hmm, obviously not good enough. Success. Um, the sharpening stone, I don't know if you can see it on the video, it's supposed to turn and set itself um, a notch further every time it travels left. And even though it was, uh, we were seeing sparks and we could hear it grinding, it definitely wasn't setting itself further. So the stone wasn't actually being pushed downwards. <clears throat> every time the stone um, just a quick uh, um, description of how it, how it works is the stone gets pushed across the whole width of the trommel and the knives obviously turn in and scrape against it. And when, the, when the stone reaches the left hand side, there's a toggle that turns the, the stone or turns the, the um, carrier of the stone uh, anti-clockwise and I'm not sure, I think you know, like five degrees or something like that. And, and, and with this turning, it gets pulled down. There's a, there's a thread on the carrier and when it gets turned, this five degrees or three degrees or eight degrees, whatever, it gets turned and it also, with the same movement, gets pushed downwards. So the stone gets completely, uh, um, or gets turned completely so it gets used up properly and it gets pushed downwards. This isn't happening, so we're not sharpening the, mess, uh, the knives properly. What I'm gonna do now is, um, I'm gonna try and set the shear bar. I've seen a few things that have worried, worried me, but I'm gonna try it anyway. <laughs> that was the first one. Uh, what well, our problem is, is the motor that uh, adjusts the shear bar on the left hand side is uh, more than likely defect. <laughs> it's been more than likely defect for a long time, for three or four years, but for s somehow it just, it kept just saving itself in the last moment. 
um, what you call that? and it looks like it's finally shagged. So it's time to go outside, put the old earmuffs on, the, the crazy glasses, and we'll have a look from outside and see what's happening, okay? <laughs> just too windy and cold and wet and loud and yeah but we've got a few problems that have arisen I definitely think we need to check the bearings on the trommel either we've got a problem that um, she's out of balance and that could be because there's shit sticking on the on the trommel somewhere or whatever um, it could be because uh, a, a screw or a, a bolt is fallen out or somewhere there's a broken knife that I haven't seen and we've definitely got a problem with the the, the add blue system there's literally a uh, urea dripping out of the exhaust directly in front of the SC Air catal catal catalyzer. So that worries me a little bit. Uh, what else? The trommel, a lot, there's, a, there's a lot of space at the back of the trommel. It's thrown a lot of food up. Um, outside uh, like underneath the cab behind the the sharpening stone uh housing and the and the chute so there's there's like a, a rubber lip there that you need to make sure is intact and uh, that's definitely not because there's a lot of food gets thrown up there now another thing we need to do while we're here is check the check the old spouter rune he should be all right because we put a new drive uh new drive sprocket on it at the end of the season um, yeah so to do that I like to I don't know if you can see first things first hang on hang on hang on we'll get rid of that can you see the bugger where is he he's there there he is so I basically like to just very quickly up and down and that way you've got to be looking down here at the turntable and that way you'll see if there's any if there's any uh, wear in the turntable and then the other check you have to do is left and right And if you've got a worn turntable or a worn turntable drive, that will just keep wobbling forward. So that looks all all right. We can do the spout tip up and down. It's important to test it. You put the spout tip upwards and you leave it for a while, you know, half an hour while you're doing your test drive and it shouldn't actually drop down on its own. If it does, that's uh, almost certainly a hydraulic valve on the, on the main valve block. Uh, that's something that happens a lot. Uh, you can also control the, the main spout as well. You usually have that pumped right up to the top. Uh, so check in that over like half an hour, um, it doesn't sag down like an old like an old horse knickers, all right? But that looks all all right. Um, any air sensor we know is knackered. Um, there was another thing I need, we need to check when we get back in the workshop and that's the, uh, the automatic air pressure system. On the left-hand side, 
was twice as much air as in the right hand side when the machine came. I manually, manually adjusted them with a normal air hose. So I'm hoping that now they stay the same. Now we've got another small problem and that's uh, the spout sensor on the turntable doesn't seem to be working properly. I've just tried to calibrate it and uh, she's not happy. So we've got that to look into. Hang on. The aircon doesn't really seem to be um, working brilliantly. So uh, when we've changed the, the cabin filters and cleaned the internal filter out here, we'll give it another go and then we'll uh, we'll check to see how much pressure she's building up and maybe put some new some new freon in or you know we'll assess the problem when we get to it. so right back to the workshop to get warm and dry uh, make a tea and then we'll get then we'll get on with it something that you definitely shouldn't forget is to park the, the, the chute, otherwise you'll make a mess of your workshop. Um, and we got to write down all these things that we found before it's too late. So, without further ado, let's get to it and see you in the workshop. So here we are. <clears throat> First thing I like to do is get the oil out of the motor. And not just the oil out of the motor, I like to get the oil out of pretty much everything. Now you've got to remember what you've taken oil out of, but if you're doing a, a service on a Jaguar, uh, once a year, you literally have to change everything. So this is going to be more about the, the yearly service, and most people will only do a yearly service. Very rarely does anybody uh, do over a thousand hours thousand hours or yearly is pretty much everything so if you do more than a thousand hours basically all you need to do is is, is do the 500 in between and for the 500 I would personally just do the, di the diesel filters the oil filters the motor oil and the main air filters. I'd blow out my, my cab filters and uh, everything else. It's always, you know, you've always got to take it with a pinch of salt. <clears throat> if you're spending a lot of time traveling from A to B with the chopper, the, the uh, uh, feeder housing isn't running. So that's one, two, three gearboxes that haven't run. So there's no point in changing the oil. So, first things first, and remember we are doing a service and a pre-harvest check at the same time. So I know we've got a diesel leak somewhere around the, the secondary diesel tank. I need to, my first job is gonna be getting the motor oil out. For that I need a 27 millimeter spanner or wrench. And we're gonna be down here where where the secondary tank is. So I'm gonna be keeping my eyes open and see if I can find anything or see anything. And yeah, we'll get that motor oil out first. And then we'll see us back here. So, to get the motor oil out. Not sure if you can see it. There, where that little chain is. That's, that's the place you need to be. Just behind the right hand side rear wheel. You see that? Just a 27 mil, you loosen it off and your oil streams out of there. 
So, <clears throat> we've got the, the motor oils running. Um, now I've just been on having a look at the back axle. Uh, what we're looking for is any grease uh, lines broken off. We're looking for metal filings from the from the uh, cardan shafts. Um, hang on. I've got my lights on here. We're looking for shaving, uh, metal filings from the cardan shafts. And bear with me. Not sure if you can see out. Oh. Yeah. So you can see the cardan shafts look healthy. Our grease lines all seem to be attached. The only thing is these axial uh, axial joints, the boots are uh, ripped. That's on both sides. So when we lift the back axle up, we'll have a look and see and see if there's any play in there. If there is, we'll have to replace them. So this here, I'm not sure if you can see it, is the steering angle sensor. That's definitely something that you should uh, keep your eye on um, because the steering angle sensor hangs down here on the back axle and is susceptible to shitting itself. Steering cylinder, that all looks nice and tidy. Um, never really had any problems with the with the steering cylinder. Yeah, like I say here, we've got the ax axial joint that's also ris uh, uh, ripped open the boot. And here the same, the grease fittings are all on. We can't see any any loose parts, any any shavings or wear from the from the cardone shaft. So I'm gonna get the oil out of the differential. That is here on the front side of the differential. And to fill it up. Um, to fill it up, you have to go to the back side. Where is it? Hey. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, that <laughs> next to the next to the sensor there's your your four wheel drive uh, cylinder have a look at that make sure that's all uh, all okay and not leaking and that's it for the back axle until we lift it up that is We'll lift it up in a minute, I'll get that oil out and then we'll see each other back here. So, the next job. Right, we've got the oil running out the motor, or it's almost run. But I like to leave it a bit more time just to really empty itself. Um, we've got the oil running out the differential on the rear axle. We've checked the rear axle from the inside for uh, any defects or wear or problems and now we're gonna empty the rear final drives to do that we're gonna lift the back axle up and we're gonna lift it up each side so we can turn each wheel individually uh, so that we can let the oil out and while we're doing that we're gonna have a good old jackly jackal on the on the wheel to see if those axial uh, axial joints are worn, or if it's just the boots that are ripped. Um, now, I know that it is a criteria <laughs> that those rubber boots have to be intact. 
I also know that these axial joints cost about a thousand euros. Now I'm not saying that you should leave them if it's just a ripped boot. I'm just saying, you know, you've got, an, you've got to decide yourself. If there is no play in them, there is no safety issue. Okay, these aren't driving at 200 kilometers an hour on the motorway and an axle joint doesn't fail because of a ripped boot. It will be that if the joints are ripped that probably next year we'll start seeing a bit of wear um, and then we'll change them. If there is any wear at all, we'll change them. But if they are good, I'm not changing them because of a rip boot. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, we've got to make money here, right? So let's get the axle lifted up. We'll have a, a shake about, get the oil out, and we'll also lift the axle up in the middle. And we want to see the middle axle bolt the big old kingpin that sits through the middle of the axle and see if that's got any, any wear in it. That's a bit more difficult to, to see because um, we've got the extra tank in. Um, and I didn't manage to find the diesel leak from the extra tank. It looks like a return line going to the top or something. So uh, we'll have to have a look from the top, see if we can see anything there. Um, it's all wet and greasy and horrible, but I can't actually see where it's running out of. Right guys, that was the first instalment of the Jaguar service and uh, pre-harvest, post-harvest check. Hopefully it wasn't too much information. The next part will be coming very soon. I'll try and continue editing today or tonight. Um, trying to keep them around the half hour or half hour 40 minutes mark so it's not too much information i think we'll have one more video in the series uh, service and and uh, pre-harvest check and then i think um you know the the other videos will also all be around the half an hour mark the more the, the, the videos that are coming up afterwards are going to be more intensive and it'll be focused on specific things. So um, if it's too much information, if the videos are too long or too short, do not uh, hesitate to let me know. Um, tell me what you want to see. This week we've been really busy. Uh, that's why we haven't really got, or I haven't got any machinery videos out. While I was away for a training, a CANBUS training, for a few days um, or three days and that sort of threw me a bit out of the out of the barn you know um, then we had a we had a truck at home in, the, in my in my shop we had a truck with a front axle problems and I really really busted us balls you know it really really did buggered us up so we've spent a few nights where we've been sitting in the workshop at two o'clock in the morning um, but we got it done I didn't film it we have another axle to do on the same truck pretty much the same thing and now we really know how to do it <laughs> we might you know I might film it so um, Tell me what you want to see. At work, I've been doing a few shorts for you guys. Um, Instagram, I've been posting a few things. If anybody wants to check out my Instagram, it's Terra Difa 39329. Um, check it out. I add a few things there all the time. I haven't got any Facebook or uh, TikTok or whatever it is, but Instagram. With that. Tell me what you want to see, what machines you want to see. We've got all sorts going on at work. We've got a slurry tanker. We've got class tractors. We've got everything going on. And yeah, please like and subscribe. Comment. And tell me, just, just get back to me. What do you want to see? What's good? What's bad? Catch you later, guys. Thanks for watching.